Hi there, I'm going to start a series of lectures which are going to span all the way from subsurface characterization and classification to the most practical aspects of engineering. I just want to share my uh, personal and professional experience over the last 15-20 years and uh, I thought I should come up with these videos so that I could help the people out there. So what I'm going to do is uh, create a short series of videos so that you could just jump from one video to the other and understand the basics as well as uh, apply these basics in resolving real life problems. So without further ado, I'll begin with my first presentation. So I kind of relate to this guy because sometimes you have to start all over again and uh, understand the very basics because this is what uh, really helps in resolving real life problems as it pertains to geotechnical engineering. As you may have heard, geotechnical engineering is not just, an, not just a science, but also an art. And to implement the art and to be an artist, you need to know your fundamentals, which is why I'm starting all the way from the basics. So as you can see here, there are three types of rocks. So one is the igneous rock, the other one is a sedimentary rock and the metamorphic rock. Now, where are these rocks coming from? So igneous rocks are generally formed due to the volcanic activities. And sedimentary rock is uh, formed due to the process of sedimentation. That means uh, the particles are bonding with each other. So if you were to have a sedimentary rock formed in your backyard, what you could do is uh, just take a bowl of sugar in a bowl uh, and then keep it out for a few days or a week. And over a period of time, you're going to see that uh, those sugar particles have bonded with each, with each other. That is the process of sedimentation. And this is how the sedimentary rocks are formed in nature. The third type of rock is a metamorphic rock. So what is exactly happening in this metamorphic rock is that the igneous and the sedimentary rock are transforming themselves into a metamorphic rock. So you may have heard about, you know, the process of metamorphosis. So essentially, this process of metamorphosis is used by the caterpillar to turn into a butterfly. So if you were to subject an igneous rock or a sedimentary rock, you know, with a, for a long time, with a very high temperature, then igneous and sedimentary rock are going to get transformed into a metamorphic rock. Now, these are the various kinds of igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic rocks. So you're going to see that uh, some of them are coarse grain, some of them are fine grain. And I really like this word, pyroclastic. Probably I'm going to name my pet after that. Jokes apart. But uh, these are the various forms of, uh, you know, the intrusive, extrusive rocks. And they all put into this category here, that is the igneous rock. Now coming to the second uh, type, that is a sedimentary rock. You know, you're going to see mudstone, claystone, siltstone, sandstone, limestone. And, uh, you know, these are formed due to the process of sedimentation. Sometimes there's chemical processes involved too, and that's, that's how the limestone, dolomite, and these kinds of rocks are formed. And the third category, as I mentioned, is the metamorphic rock. So you can see it as a slate, fillet, cyst, knees. They are form of metamorphic rocks. So why is it important to know these kinds of rocks? For example, we have the slate, fillet, cyst, knees. You know, these all these four types of rock come from shale. That is a form of sedimentary rock. And shale, they don't have... Uh, you know a lot of capacity if you were to uh, you know expose the shale to atmosphere for a long time it literally deteriorates because there's a lot of sulfuric acid formed in it and therefore the load bearing capacity of the rock significantly gets degraded over a period of time so to understand these things you have to know where these rocks are coming from and how they are formed Now, let me ask you a question. What has come first, the chicken or the egg? Well, we don't know the answer to that, but 
when it comes to so rock and soil we know for a fact that soil has come from rock but how does it form it's formed due to the process of mechanical and chemical weathering as you can see in this picture you know these rocks are subjected to all kinds of forces for example these rock particles they break down due to wind water glaciers thermal expansion contraction freeze thaw and gravity landslides so what is basically happening is if you were to take these rock particles and rub them against each other what do you expect to happen you going to see small particles coming out of it and this is basically nothing but the process of mechanical weathering and this is what is shown in the picture you know there's desiccation there's cracking then there's water flowing over the rocks and they they kind of shape the rock and that's the process of mechanical weathering now what is the second form that is a chemical weathering essentially what we are talking about is acids and salts reacting with minerals to form really small particles and those particles are so small that sometimes they are not visible to the naked eye and this is a process of chemical weathering so see you guys in the next video